The survivor of a suicide attempt is getting a second chance at life, getting a new face. <laughs> 21-year-old Katie Stubblefield is the youngest face transplant recipient ever in the U.S. Three years ago, she was seriously wounded from a self-inflicted gunshot injury. Stubblefield using her story of survival to raise awareness. All right, let's go now to a leader in face transplant operations, Dr. Gabby Dumit, Assistant Professor of Surgery at the Cleveland Clinic Foundation and the University of Montreal. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. What was your involvement in the case? Basically, uh, I was the director of craniofacial surgery at Cleveland Clinic when Katie came to Cleveland Clinic. So we started treating her back in May 2014 and a part of the uh, Cleveland Clinic face transplant team. When you first saw her and, and were able to assess her injuries, what went through your mind? Well, you know, from the get-go, I knew, because this is the second face transplant that I have done, that she would need a face transplant, that conventional surgery are not good enough to give her back her life, uh, get her back to society with a normal face. But, you know, face transplant is such a, a the procedure is very complicated, but even what's more complex is actually the, uh, you know, the psychology around the patient, because the patient tried to kill herself. And when you do face transplant, they have to be on basically lifelong immunosuppressant. Are they ready for this to take that commitment and uh, be involved in the process? Because it's an active team, the patient, the patient have to be active in the treatment process. What made you decide that this was a candidate who could handle this? So basically, you know, it's a, it, that's what's great about the surgery. It's, there's about 30 medical professionals who were 11 surgeons and multiple other specialists. So the, the patient, every patient that presents for face transplant, they undergo basically a very thorough psychological evaluation by a psychiatrist, by a psychologist, etc. And when they feel they fit to undergo the surgery, then basically we go ahead with the surgery. So it is, you know, as a, as a craniofacial surgeon, as a plastic surgeon that specializes in the face, my decision is to decide if she's a good candidate surgically. Mentally, basically other professionals will be involved as well. What was the biggest challenge you had then physically <laughs> in making this happen? So, you know, Katie, her damage was extensive. She destroyed her eye sockets. She was blind. She had no nose. Her tongue was blown off. Her upper jaw, lower jaw were gone. And basically, she, she could not breathe. She could not chew. And uh, her function of, of her muscle, her facial muscle, were gone completely. So we had to do a full face transplant. And you have to find, basically, a good donor that will match the same features of her face because you are taking a, a, a dead by the donor her, that they have to match in terms of wits to that new person. So, and then you have to reconstruct basically the eye socket, the upper jaw, lower jaw, the eyelids. So it's a, it's a 31 hour procedure. So it's a very, it's a marathon basically. Uh, it sounds incredibly complicated. How successful was it? It was actually very successful. I mean, uh, at Cleveland Clinic, this is the third face transplant that we have done there. I was involved with two of them. And before we proceed with any surgery, uh, we have a cadaver lab and we undergo, we analyze her CT scan, we use 3D model, basically we print her, uh, her face on, on, in a plastic 3D models. And then we go to the cadaver lab, we create the defect that she have, and we basically take another cadaver, we'll take their face and try to practice because you have to connect the bone, the muscle, the nerves, the tongue, the eyelids. So it's a very, you know, you, you spend hours and hours in the cadaver lab getting ready for the surgery. Once you come to the surgery, it's basically a routine because you already knew what you will have to do. You're just there to execute the surgery. Yeah, so you're clear on, on where you're going and that everything should come together. Dr. Gabby Dumit, I'd love to talk some more. This is fascinating, but we've run out of time. Appreciate you joining us today on the program. Thank you for having me.